Hi, I'm Kranti Samba. You're watching Overdrive, and today we at uh, Volkswagen Annual Brand Conference, and we have Ashish with us. Uh, thank you so much, thank Ashish, you. and uh, congratulations on uh, these unveilings. Thank you. And uh, first thing first, uh, we can see that uh, you know the whole uh, description of different variants. Yeah. So, what I wanted to understand first, uh, how is GT Line and GT Plus different? Yeah. So, agar ab dek, you know, if you see. Um, uh, when we launched the Tiguan and the Virtus, we had a two-line structure, which was basically the dynamic line, which uh, basically was the one-liter variant that we had, starting from comfort line, high line to the top line. And then we had the 1.5-liter variants, which was the GT Plus. And then we introduced the GT last year. So uh, that is how the lineup is. But if I look at you know how the market has moved over the years, uh, customers are now differentiating cars based on the design appeal. Yeah? Performance everybody wants, and if the feedback that we have are both our engine options are performance oriented because both are turbocharged engines. So how do you now transform your line structure, keeping in mind the trend in our customers, or at least the customers who you know buy into Volkswagen and differentiate it by style? So that's what we have done. Now we have the chrome line or uh, the chrome styled cars, uh, which is our existing lineup starting from you know comfort line, uh, high line, and top line, and also the 1.5 liter engine chrome styled GT. Yeah, so that is what the Chrome line is. Today what we have launched is the sport styled or the sport line, which includes the DG, GT Plus Sport, which is with black elements in the interior and exterior, and also the GT line, which now brings the GT-ness into a one liter or a you know, lower price point. The GT line will be positioned between the high line and the top line on the one liter engine. So, uh, for Tygon, for example, yes. how many variants now uh, yeah, so portfolio. if you look at it currently on the Tigon on the one liter, we have the uh, comfort line, high line, and the uh, top line, which also has automatic and manual transmission options. Uh, on the 1.5 liter, we have the GT Low, which is basically the high line based uh, GT, and then uh, two variants in that, manual and automatic, and two on the uh, 1.5 with the DSG and the manual, yeah, with the sp top spec. So that is our current lineup. Uh, with the addition of these two, we are also evaluating whether we you know take out some of the variants as we go through the year. Okay, so you'll also kind of rationalize yeah, of it and yeah. uh, so uh, what kind of ratio do you see uh, customer uh, preference wise, yeah, so where do they go the most? So if, if I look at the total, you know, uh, differentiation between 1 litre and 1.5 litre, 1.5 litre is around 35 to 40 percent uh, of our, uh, you know, sales and six, uh, 65 to 60 percent is the 1 litre. And you also mentioned uh, that uh, Virtus is also a, a concept version. So, yes. But uh, at the same time, you haven't announced the prices for any. Uh, any no. So the price when, when should we expect? So the Tygon uh, basically uh, we will be launching, and with the price announcement towards the third week of April, and bookings have already started anyway. Uh, but the price announcement and formal launch will be towards the third week of uh, April. The Virtus GT Plus Sport we are uh, targeting to bring in the festive season. What about the showstopper ID4? Yeah. When are you bringing it? Yeah, so you know this is the first official showcase. Our target is to bring and start sales of this car towards the end of this year. So no festive season launch? No, it has its own timelines because you know the FBU imports have a timeline that we need to stick to. So it will take its time, and uh, you know target is to by the end of this year. And how do you see the segment uh, where you're trying to put this? No, it's a very niche segment, to be honest. Huh? It's a, it's a, it's going to be positioned in a very premium space in the EV, you know, uh, whole juggernaut that's happening right now. EV market itself is not not very big, but the endeavor is not to target volumes with this. Yeah, the endeavor is, or the way I see it is, as our as our first step towards electrification in India. Uh, once we make this a success, we test the waters, we see how our cars are doing in the market, how the infrastructure is developing. It opens up the next steps that we want to take. And how do you see the electric market right now? Because uh, in India and even internationally, uh, there is some sentiment which is not uh, as uh, excited about uh, EVs as we were seeing it maybe one year back. You know, whenever a transformation happens in any industry, leave aside the automotive industry, there are lots of ups and downs. You know, this is a new territory for most of the manufacturers, most of the customers. So it takes a little bit of time for people to understand what makes sense for them. So that's the phase the entire industry is uh, going for. I think the EV industry has also been heavily, at least in other markets, very dependent on policy support from the government. So, you know, 
if those policies change, you do see some kind of a turbulence happening in the market. But these are natural things which, which happen during any transformation and will settle to a good point uh, over the years. That's what we see happening uh, globally. In India, it's a very, very small market right now. The number of players are very limited and very limited number of choices for the customers. So as people like us bring in more choices for the customers, the market will grow even further. And you think that governments uh, should still think of uh, supporting this segment, this market, uh, more and more? I think uh, that's very clear that when you are doing a transformation at this scale, you do need policy support. All right. And uh, you also mentioned the, the kind of uh, preference Indian customers have. They are going for uh, feature-rich cars. How, yeah. how is that changing? Very, very profoundly. You know, if I look at the entire industry labor side, us, uh, the sales of the top end variants constitute almost upward of 25% for everybody. You know, so the customers are not willing to compromise today on any of the features or safety or performance of the car. They want everything. Uh, this aspiration in Indian market has always been there. But what was lacking was the capability to ma match those aspirations. What we see happening in India over the last five years is people now have the capability you know, the willingness to pay to match those aspirations. And uh, this has also helped you because... Uh, uh... That's our natural positioning, yeah. We've always been, you know, a premium brand. Uh, we've always, you know, looked at offering uh, the top-end features, the top-end uh, safety, you know, which, are, which is our basic DNA and a fun-to-drive experience to customers. So with the market moving uh, also towards this trend, naturally plays into our territory. And uh, one question about the used car market. You said that that's a big uh, potential for you. How yeah. do you uh, plan to tackle it? No, I think we are already very aggressive in the used car market. Uh, last year, we did a study in terms of brand recall for organized, uh, you know, OEM-led uh, pre-owned car. Uh, and uh, typically, we constitute only one, one and a half percent of the used car market. But our brand recall was ranked at around four, number four or five. So we have worked a lot on establishing our used car business through the Dasfeld Auto brand. We are now, uh, we now have almost 130 touch points where we, where our dealers, you know, uh, uh, deal in uh, trading in or buying and selling of used cars. So the important thing is that how do you establish a standard process and a trustworthy brand and a trustworthy service to the customers. That's been our endeavor and we're getting there. And one customary question which we, uh, I think I ask you every time, <laughs> what about uh, when we talk about premium, uh, you know, segment and yeah. premium features, so are, are you still not willing to uh, go below Virtus and uh, what do you want to say to Polo fans? <laughs> no, that, you know, I know this question uh, will come. Uh, at some point, you know, my ambition, you know, and this is not something which is very official, my ambition is that we need to bring the polo, you know, in whatever avatar, whether it is an SUV, whether it is an electric polo, at some time, yes. You're the boss, so <laughs> I hope all the polo fans are happy. Thank yeah. you so much Thank and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.